So before getting into the meat of presentation techniques, I thought I should discuss the conservation materials used in the upcoming posts and videos. Now, I come from a black and white gelatin silver print background, which relied on proper processing of my negatives and prints, proper storage, and proper display to maximize the longevity of my prints. And that's always been a concern. And I can't help but be equally careful with my current Polaroid SX70 integral film photographs. Now, most photographic print materials typically have an exposed emulsion layer on a paper substrate, which makes them particularly vulnerable to acidic materials, physical wear and tear, and what have you. Now, this demands mount boards and mats that meet conservation standards and mounting corners or hinges that are not only acid-free and archival, but allow for the print to be removed or to be repaired or reframed without causing physical damage. However, SX70 prints are significantly different. The emulsion is sandwiched between polyester sheets front and back with white plastic seals along all the edges. And to that extent, you would think that SX70s are less vulnerable than paper-based prints to acidic matting and mounting materials. But it's hard to gauge because so little is known about the longevity of SX70 photos. Now I have a copy of Polaroid Corporation's 1983 publication, Storing, Handling and Preserving Polaroid Photographs, a guide. And it has lots of good advice about Polaroid peel apart products, but not too much about SX70, the SX70 format. Now it does state that all photographic materials, including all Polaroid films, need to be protected from light, chemical action, high humidity, heat, and physical abuse. Now, when we talk about chemical action, then we're talking about uh, acidic materials coming in, into contact with the photographic uh, material or perhaps uh, some other form of a chemical off-gassing. Regarding instant photographs, the publication goes on to say that instant photographs made from integral films are least likely to be affected by exterior chemical action because the front and back of the image are protected by tough, chemically resistant polyester sheets. That's all fine and dandy and the other information that the book contains is a really interesting book to read actually if you're dealing with vintage Polaroid materials. However, much of that 1983 advice is likely moot considering the current crop of integral films manufactured by First the Impossible Project, then Polaroid Originals, and now just playing Polaroid is a totally different formula. And by all accounts, even that formula, formula is quite happily being improved on a regular basis. Now, looking back at my 1979 era SX-70 photographs, which have spent most of their lives in a small cardboard box, I do find that they are pretty much as vibrant as when they were originally taken. However, many of the photographs have under, undertaken some physical deterioration. Specifically, the plastic edges have detached on the backs of some of the photographs, mostly along the sides and the bottom edge, as you can see in this particular photograph right here. Now, my current crop of 2020-2022 Polaroids appear to be holding up quite nicely. However, they have all developed a serious concave curl arching between the top and bottom edges, but more typically between the opposite top and bottom corners of the photographs. And it's a pretty stubborn curve. They really refuse to lie flat. The only real conclusion that I can draw from all these observations is that SX-70 photos have their very own unique issues that are not really well understood compared to photo emulsions on a paper base. However, I do think that there are several conservation measures that can be observed as we go through this process. Number one is that SX-70 films develop in 50 minutes, but it takes significantly longer for the prints to dry. Current Polaroid advice is that SX-70 films should not be compressed in an album or sealed in a frame or plastic sleeve for at least 30 days after exposure. Second, as with most photographic materials, Polaroids are sensitive to UV light exposure, which over time can result in fading. Now, if framed, ideally photos should be behind UV glass or UV acrylic glazing, but at minimum, you should position framed photos so that they will not be hit by direct sunlight. 
Number three, like most photographic materials, Polaroids should be stored and displayed in a cool, moderately dry environment. In 1983, Polaroid Corporation recommended a relative humidity of 30 to 50 percent and a temperature of 16 to 21 degrees cent centigrade that fluctuates no more than 4 degrees centigrade or Celsius. And that's likely good sound advice for current SX-70 films as well as any other kind of film, really. However, it's pretty hard to achieve in a non-museum space. Instead, just try to avoid attics and basements. Try to keep your photos away from radi radiators and heat vents. And don't refrigerate your exposed film images. Number four is avoid bending the film excessively as it can cause separation of the image from the base. And there's no remedy if this happens. Number five, very similar, don't cut SX-70 film as the image could detach from the base. And again, there's no remedy if this happens. And by extension, mounting photos with push pins or thumbtacks through the image area is not a good idea either. So number six is that although integral films are plastic sandwiches, it's still prudent to mount, mat, and frame them using ar archival materials. If possible, you should be using materials that are certified uh, as ANSI, it's ANSI IT 9.16 or ISO 14523-1999, which has since been revised to colon 2007. And at minimum, you should be looking for materials that are labeled acid-free. In other words, they have a minimum pH of, of 7. For example, the label for Scotch double-sided scrapbooking tape says it has a ISO of, meets ISO anyways, 14523 colon 1999 photo safe standards, and that it is acid-free with a pH of 7 to 8. And perhaps similarly, although a lot less defined, this Yihu stick, which is a um, basically a, a glue stick, does state on the packaging that it is hazard-free. Doesn't go any further than that, but at least it's a start. Number seven is that you want to mount photos so that the photos can be removed without physically damaging the photograph. You do want to use adhesives such as tape or glue to directly attach the photos to their mounts. Instead, use non-physical attachment approaches, such as polyester photo corners with acid-free photo-safe adhesive that doesn't con come in contact with the photo. Now, this then allows the photo to be easily removed if, if it is required for physical repair or conservation, but more pro pro pragmatically, if you want to change up a framed or album photo uh, and put another one in its place, then Photo corners make that a pretty easy task just by gently bending the Polaroid out of the photo corners and replacing it with another photo. And that's the great thing about SX-70 is that they're all identical in size where they created in 1972 or 2022. Of course, some of these conservation measures are not always practical. In my own case, maintaining a constant relative humidity and temperature is pretty much near impossible. I live in a non-air conditioned house where the temperature can soar into the high 30 degrees centigrade in summertime. And then in winter, uh, the outdoor temperature can reach minus 30 degrees centigrade. And although I can maintain a good interior temperature, I do have to deal with radiator heating and it really does get skin cracking dry on the inside of our house. And of course, there's also monetary limitations. Now, I try to use the best quality archival materials where possible. Uh, for example, I use the scrapbook tape I talked about earlier. Uh, I use archival photo corners. I use acid-free foam core and mat board, all of which are pretty affordable options. But I also use inexpensive wood frames, such as those available from Ikea and from Michaels. And these frames tend to come with ordinary glass or a very thin acrylic glazing that offer no UV protection at all. So it's a little bit like fighting climate change. I do as many of the good things as I can and I try to avoid doing as many bad things as I can. Anyways, enough with the technical background. Let's get on to some actual presentation techniques in part three. I'll see you then.